Hello, my name's Pat Randall and today we're coming from the Whittington Press where I work with my dad, John. Um, my dad started the Whittington Press in 72, I think, so I was nearly 50 years old. And um, he started it as a means to um, publish and print his own books by letterpress, working with artists and um, printing from letterpress type. And I have started my own imprints, maybe six seven years ago called nomad letterpress um so we work from the same building uh but we work on different projects and um we're here today to talk about a few or a couple at least of the projects that we've got on the go at the moment most of our projects um are linked by the fact that we work with artists who engrave into wood or engrave into metal so wood engravers um, etchers and um, perhaps pochoir artists anybody who's prepared to work within the third dimension so um, somebody who, who carves or engraves into solid objects and our work is linked by the fact that we also um, are always printing from letterpress type I'm especially lucky with the fact that um, it, at Whittington we cast our own type. So we have a guy called Neil who works two days a week who did one of the last letterpress apprenticeships and um, we've got three monotype machines and that means that we're always printing from fresh, freshly cast type. Um, okay, let's go and have a look what we're up to. So this is a project that um, it's on the go at the moment. It's a book with um, an artist called Paul Kershaw and perhaps I'll just um, chat a bit about how it came into being. Um, so we're, we're going to publish this as a, as a Nomad letterpress imprint and Paul is um, a wood engraver. Um, can you see? Can you see that? He, maybe we can do a close-up of that after. Hey? Ah. Okay, so this is um, an engraving called Calm, which Paul Kershaw did from a previous book called 2020 Vision. How's that? Um, called 2020 Vision. And Paul, that was a couple of years ago. Um, 2020 Vision was, a, was a, a book which featured 20 current wood engravers, and it was a great publication for me to do because it introduced me to... Um, many wood engravers that I, did, that I didn't really know, and Paul being one of them. Um, Paul is, um, but he really pushes engraving to its maximum limitations. Um, I hope is a good way of putting it. And he, um, he is very experimental with the way that he works in terms of his inking and his make ready, peeling off bits of ink with paper. Um, getting your roller set up in, a, in, in an unconventional way on, on the press. And um, when we came to print this um, engraving, this is um, um, a, a letter with notes about how I must print it. Um, so, for example, um, the, 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 it needs to be hand rolled and the hand roller needs to fade from uh, uh, along the long side at a slight angle so there's um, no build up of ink in these grooves up here so it's, it's very precise detail and Paul actually came down to work with us um, when we were running this one through the press and um, it was at that point that um, it, it, this book which has it is about to come into fruition now is a book about Sky, the place where he lived for 20 years. And it's a book that has been um, on the agenda and on his mind for maybe 20 years or so. But um, I felt that when he came to do that printing here, um, that was a time where perhaps he felt that he could trust us to do, to do the printing and to do the publishing of the book. And so the book is slowly has slowly built up a momentum since that time and here we have the text and just yesterday this huge box of prints arrived from Paul with annotations about make ready and where he sees perhaps the block lying in conjunction with the text throughout the book um, so 
this one. Am I going to go up to that camera? Um, so this is an engraving called Dunotter, for example, and you can see the castle in the background up there. Um, and here we have some notes about how to make ready some of the sea area, some annotations about which paper he's used, which ink, um, he, he, a, graph, a graphite black by T.N. Lawrence is one that he loves, which has got a slight um, metallic um, fleck to it. And um, and the ink fade again there, grubbing in. Um, so um, th th this is the stage really where we've got the text here, we've got the images here, but we're going to work out where the text sits in conjunction with the image on the page. And we're going to think about what paper we're going to use, um, whether we're going to incorporate any colour, what scale, what size of the book, what typeface we're going to use. And it's a really exciting moment, this. Um, and a, a trial page will be done with a couple of uh, typefaces that we've got in mind. And um, it's a time to be playful and to experiment with what we think will work best as a, as a page, marrying those text and image together. And I'll do that with Paul. Paul, um, he, um, he's got many thoughts and ideas about how this might work. So um, it, it won't just be um, one of us dictating to the other exactly how we see the book. We will go back and forward with a paste up, probably for the next few months, until we're dead set on, on how we want to proceed. This is something else that I was going to talk about. It is some, well, it's some like packaging material, um, which I don't really do too much of. Job, um, I'll call it jobbing printing, um, but, but, but commercial commission printing. But this is a slight exception because it's from a friend, Joe Sweeting, my new friend, Joe Sweeting. And, um, and we're going to work on a, on a book together um, over the coming year or two. Um, Joe did a spread for Double Dagger, which is myself and Nick's, uh, Nick Loring, the Print Projects magazine. Um, this was the 2019 edition. So Joe's um, a wood carver, amongst many other things, and so she, she's written a narrative about her work, and then we were able to, to, to feature two of her woodcuts there, and that's how I got to know Joe. Um, but she's also recently started to make um, these huge scarves which she sells in, in nicely packaged boxes. And this little job here, which we're just looking at because it's kind of on the press today, is a, um, is a dictionary of the Sussex dialect written by W.D. Parrish and it's the four seasons, spring, summer, autumn, winter, with a collection of words um, words that have been lost to the English language over time. And um, these are kind of the themes that, that interests and, and, and inspire into um, Joe's work. So when you buy one of Joe's scarves, very reasonably priced, you get one of these you get the scarf and you get um, another wraparound band which I've, which I've printed for as well. Um, the, here's the paste up for the job. Not a, not a big deal to be honest but it's um, it's just how I go around thinking about you know perhaps where to put a rule in, um, uh, how to arrange. Um, so what, what we've got here is 14 point wall band so it's 14 point wall band small caps with the, with the Roman there. Um, and I try and make life as easy as possible for myself. So this is very simply one sheet of paper, one colour, letterpress, one colour at a time. So if that was to be two colours, it would be double the printing. Um, and this is an offcut from a sh huge sheet of, um, of, what's this stuff called? Uh, Bugra Bouton, which is a honeymoon of paper, which comes on a, a, a meter long sheets. And we, um, my dad uses this paper to 
wrap around his matrix books and we're always left with these huge long offcuts so that's beautiful paper but slightly um, tricky to find jobs which um, can accommodate this this sheet um, but if you fold it into four it, it makes quite a nice four page booklet so one two three four pages and you've only printed the key thing on, on the one side of the sheet again which is again making our life as, as simple and easy as possible and you'll find that um, if somebody asks me to do a job um, and they say do whatever you want to save costs and time it will normally end up being on one of the off-cut sheets or bits of paper that we have knocking around here um, using a typeface which is to hand or, or on the casters and um, there won't be any options available to the person asking other than getting rid of these offcuts and using that type which is which is available so um, I hope that explains slightly some of the thought processes that, that might go into a job like that this is another project that um, I want to mention today um, it's really, this is my own um, personal pet project which gets done at times where, where there's not much else going on and, um, you know, puts a bit of excitement into, into my life, hopefully. Um, so this, the binding of this book is based around this book that we touched on earlier, the 2020 Collector's Cut book. Um, and it's called a French fold design so what you're doing is you're printing on to one side of a sheet like so you're completely ignoring the, the reverse of the sheet and then that sheet is folded like so at the top and folded in half there and, and so you've, that's, that, that becomes a double face spread and it's, it's a method that worked well I thought in this book um, the downside is that you're kind of turning, can you see that, you're turning two sheets at once um, which can be problematic in that the, the paper needs to be able to withstand it but um, the benefit of it for the printer is that you're only worrying about printing on one side of the sheet and so all those issues around backing up and um, um, uh, getting your type in it in exactly the right place can slightly be bypassed um, and, and, it, and it means that each four page section can be almost treated as, as, um, as its own spread, its own poster really in a way and so this book is like I said it's my pet project it's seven different typographies or different typefaces and an eight page um, section for each one um, and it's um, type, typographic based but, but featuring some wood engravings and some border ornaments and some rules and some other bits of playing around which have crossed my path while they go from my mind um, so this spread here this spread here is um, perhaps I would say it's the Rudolf Koch spread um, we've got Neuland typeface here in, in three sizes you can see that um, so we've got we've got spreads of Neuland and then we've got a couple of others of his typefaces that he did very generously um, loaned to me by John Grice of Evergreen Press this is Zeppelin and this is Cable Zeppelin's the, um, the outline of Cable um, and the text is so Rudolf Koch was a German typeface designer from the uh, pre-war period, um, and he's quite unique in that um, he was um, he he both designed Neuland, or Neuland is unique in the way that it was both designed by him and cut by him, um, and he worked directly into the punches with. Um, with his with his tools um, um, without a kind of um, 
preparatory drawings or without any strict guidelines about where he was going it seems so um, the, the different sizes of, of characters so all slightly have their own personalities um, and it, it almost you, you can sense that handmade quality of it um, uh, we don't have loads of Neuland so what I have to do when I'm setting this text this text is an interview with it with um, an engraver called Helmut Weisenborn and Helmut Weisenborn's blocks um, many of his blocks are at Whittington and um, we have access to them and he's done this amazing interview about when he was an intern um, when he came to the UK and he was interned as a German emigre um, so that's a text that I've transcribed and because we got so little of this type, I don't know if you can see that, maybe a bit of close up of it in a bit, but because we got so little of the type, I'm probably only able to set seven or eight lines at a time. And you can kind of just see, I can I can tell myself, that's the other line, it's the cutoff, and best witnesses is where I begin again. Um just because the spacing it could be another whisker downwards that, that second section. Um, but because I wanted to make these semi neat endings here, the flexibility you have when you're hand setting is you're able to do stuff like, uh, perhaps he would have said and there, a number of German and Austrian emigres. So what I've done is swap the and for an ampersand. Um, when you have a hyphen there, you can play around with the spacing either side of it to increase or decrease it to make your line endings there as neat as possible. In fact, you wouldn't even speak a hyphen, would you? So that's perhaps a pause in the conversation, which I've interpreted as a hyphen. So you've got, you've got the freedom there, um, which is only available when you're either working on your own, to your own designs, um, or you're working very closely with somebody an artist, a publisher, a poet, who doesn't mind you uh, messing around with their text. Um, or, or you can do it with, with their permission. So I, I hope Helmut wouldn't mind too much about my um, my use of slightly weird and obscure punctuation in that piece. And these are Helmut's um, wood engravings here in beautiful condition. I don't know if you can see them. Um, so this, that's the woman there with the moon in the background that slots there. And then down at the bottom, there's the there's a man screaming in horror. Um, so this is spacing for Neuland. Um, yeah. Neuland was a Klingspor type foundry um, typeface, and the interesting thing is when you buy Neuland, there's a, there's a man in Germany called Rainer Gerstenberg who owns the mats and casts it. You buy the spacing to come with it because it's on a different point system to ours. Yeah. And um, they've got a completely completely different um, spacing arrangement so you've got seven or eight different kinds of of word spacing that you can fit between the words whereas in England you're stuck with thin, thick, mids unless you start to use hair spaces etc but, but yeah uh, um, that's a slightly different spacing layout system than, than, than you'd see in any UK typeface so bringing it back today and the project that we've done with um, Steve, Steve and Jay Fowler, uh, 25 poems. Um, if I talk a bit about the physicality of, of the project design wise, so what we're looking at is the bed of the Western proofing press. Um, and the bed of the western is about 750mm wide by 500 deep and um, the idea of this project was to do again uh, a recurring theme but printing on one side of the sheet of paper to make our life as easy as possible and um, and really the, the maximum size of the of the bed so um, I don't know I almost describe what when people are first using these machines, to treat the bed of your press as, as like your blank canvas. And there you can see we've separated it up into um, eight sections. Um, 
into which we, we can fit our eight pages. And the beautiful thing about letterpress is that actually um, it might look fiendishly complicated, but each one of these bits of spacing, units of spacing, bits of lead and bits of furniture, they all exist to a very precise measurement and they all interact with each other um, in a way that makes it quite easy to set up um, pages and, and compose pages of, of type to a, to a square piece of paper or a rectangular piece of paper. But what we've done is we've used um, the eight page format to our benefit and we've imposed it whereby pages four and five are next to each other and when the book opens out they will um, be on a double page spread next to each other. So those are the two pages where we've gone right, we've got double the width, um, so let's take advantage of that. And so we've used, is it a, th a, th a 24 point or a 36 point wall band I think we've used for, the, for that section. We've also taken advantage of the fact that we're on one sheet of paper um, and we can run, we were thinking about something w that we could run over all of the eight pages and the obvious thing is a rule. I think we've used two rules there to um, give us a, a, a headline on, on all eight of the pages above which we've put the page number. So that's given us a structure, basic structure. And I feel that um, as long as you've got that basic structure in mind and you've done that nicely, we've printed the rule, is it a two point rule? We've printed it crisply. The page number is the same typeface on each page, printed crisply. You've semi, to my mind, then you've semi got a license to use each page as a, as a different entity then. And those um, items, the rule and the page numbers will hopefully bring the um, project together as a whole, give it a kind of uniformity. You can do whatever the hell you want with the, with the, with the rest of the page. So we've used, um, what have we used? We've used engraver shaded, we've used wall balm, and we've used universe, I think. You know, three typefaces that, that, um, that um, normal minds w wouldn't put together. But, um, um, yeah, that, 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 was, uh, that was the aim of the project really, wasn't it? To experiment with different typefaces from different eras and, and see the effects that we get. And then we've used the three papers, haven't we? More for practical reasons than, than anything else. We wanted to try out that really thin Japanese paper. I'm not quite sure if we've got a name for it, have we? Um, but it's a um, very thin paper, but surprisingly strong. The fibres in it are... are, are um, it, it, it doesn't tend to tear, does it? it? It folds well on the page. Yeah, lovely. And then we've got the Naturalis, which is um, a paper that we keep in stock because it's very good at printing wood engravings. It's got a lovely hard surface to it and it's um, relatively affordable when compared to like um, um, mold made papers of the same style. And then, um, did we use a third paper? I can't remember. Oh, the Sonomi, yeah. So the Sonomi is, um, that's the one that I've used for the 2020 Visions, a very smooth surface paper, which again is ideal for printing engravings. It was a lot of fun to have Steve here. So Steve's, um, Steve is a rule breaker and um, he doesn't come from a um, um, particular typographic background, I don't think, but he's got his ideas and um, to, uh, the energy that he brought to the poems um, that, that's informed the whole design of, of, of what you're seeing so um, perhaps it's time for S Steve then to he, it's, he's going to talk obviously about um, the words and how they came into being and his abuse of the English language <laughs>